Baptist Church, so glad that you joined in with us. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Ophiel Brody Jr., we want to welcome you to our virtual church experience. So excited that you joined in with us today. We want to uh, ask you to turn in your Bibles to Psalm 66. Uh, Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sing praises to you. They sing praises to your name. That's what we come to do, brothers and sisters. We want to worship and praise our good and gracious God. Let's go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for another blessed opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we ask that you would have your way in this worship experience. Draw those hearts and minds that need to have a closer relationship with you. And God, we will be ever sure to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Unwind to Stay Kind, our fourth mental health conference presented by Holistic Opportunities Propelling Everyone, also known as the Hope Center of Carmody Hills. I am Dr. Joanne Fedrick Leva, also known as Dr. J, the Executive Director of the Hope Center of Carmody Hills. The Hope Center provides counseling services to our community. We have skilled therapists and residents in training who can help you manage your anxiety, depression, and challenges you may face during this pandemic. We are also here to celebrate your wins and accomplishments. Teletherapy sessions are available. That means sessions that we can do via telephone, text, and video. If you are interested or you know someone who may be, please call us at 240-719-2699 or email us at hopecentercounseling at gmail.com. Unwind to Stay Kind is the theme of this year's Mental Health Awareness Conference. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, which means we are here to celebrate our mental health. This year, we will host the fourth Mental Health Conference online via Zoom, 12 to 1.30 p.m. on Saturday, May 23rd. The registration link is listed below. It will also be available through our Facebook and Instagram page, which is hopecentercounseling.org. Unwind to stay kind. In the midst of the global pandemic, it is important to remind people that although we have lost many things, kindness should always be among us. During this conference, we will highlight ways to be kind to ourselves and to others. We will have several dynamic speakers. One of our presenters are Dr. Charlene Allen Milton, a licensed clinical social worker from Baltimore, Maryland. She will be presenting Establishing Work-Life Harmony. Another one of our presenters coming from Prince George's County, Maryland, will be Lolita Walker, a certified coach and TEDx speaker. She will present on focusing on the eye in kind. In addition, we will have presenter Dr. Joanne Frederick Leva, a licensed professional counselor in the state of Maryland and in the District of Columbia also a national certified counselor. She will be presenting on kindness in chaos. Lastly, Unwind to Stay Kind will be our fourth mental health conference via Zoom, 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. on Saturday, May 23rd. Stay posted for more information. Certainly, Carmen Hills Baptist Church, I certainly thank God for each of you. Certainly thank God that you are always present and available as we are continuing to do ministry using various different platforms. And we certainly thank you for your connectivity. We thank you for your 
contributions to the body of Christ. We thank God for still allowing us, allowing you <clears throat> to utilize your spiritual gifts that he has blessed and equipped you with. Certainly, again, we ought to be honored just to be in the land of the living. Just one more time. Certainly, we thank God for all of our friends and our family who are gathered together in their living rooms, bedrooms, kitchen, watching, viewing our service. And certainly let us continue to pray for our faith community. Certainly let's continue to pray uh, for the First Baptist Church of Deanwood and the passing of their pastor, good friend, Pastor Ronald K. Minor. Certainly let us just pause for a moment as we reflect as we just say a word as I say a word of prayer for the church this family <clears throat> Father my God we thank you we thank you again for the life of Pastor Minor we thank you for the giftedness that you have blessed him with while he was on this earth. Now we pray, God, that you will strengthen his family. Pray, God, that you will strengthen the church that you assigned him to pastor. God, we pray that you would give them a peace, give his family a peace that surpasses all understanding. God, I pray that they will remember his labor. Pray, God, that they will reflect on the precious memories that they have shared together. God, we thank you Again, for Pastor Minor. Because God, he has touched so many lives in this DMD area. Be with him, God, his family. Strengthen his family. Strengthen the church. in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Certainly I won't hold you too long this morning. I believe that we do have a word from the Lord. Certainly we thank God for all of our uh, officers and all of our uh, preachers. Uh, certainly thank God for all the ministries that represents <clears throat> this great, great church. I want to invite you to the book of Matthew chapter number 17 verses 17 through 20 Matthew chapter 17 verses 17 through 20 and Jesus answered 
old faithless and twisted generation. How long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of him. And the boy was healed instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? He said to them, Because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Father, my God, we thank you. We worship you. We magnify you, God. I pray that you will use me mightily this morning as we give you the glory, as we give you the honor, and as we give you the praise. God, we celebrate you on today because, God, you're worthy to be celebrated. Now, God, I pray that you would use me for your glory. That your word will encourage us. That your word will challenge us. And that your word will strengthen us. Use me, God, for your glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. I want to preach from the subject this morning a faith checkup. A faith checkup. We live in a world. That requires us to have checkups. A checkup is a thorough examination. Every examination requires a diagnostic tool. The diagnostic tool gives the diagnosis of the test. The diagnosis is the process of finding out what is causing symptoms. When we go to the doctor and we are having health challenges and we don't know what is going on. And the doctor is not clear on what our symptoms are. He runs tests. She runs tests to see what is causing our illness. Uh, yeah. Not only not only do we receive physical checkups, but the cars. The vehicles, uh -huh. automobiles, the boats, the motorcycles that we ride or drive must have 
a checkup as well. We have diagnostic indicators and in our cause that alerts us when it is time for us to get our vehicles serviced. Yes, sir. Uh, there, there are some symptoms that our cars have that does not have the necessary indicator uh -huh. to alert us that our vehicles are going to break down. Yes, sir. When we take our vehicles to the shop, we take them to the shop to see what is wrong with it. The service manager will advise us that we need, that they need our authorization yes, to perform a diagnostic test. Uh -huh. They want to perform a diagnostic test on our vehicles to see what the problems are. Also, they will inform you that there is a cause to perform the diagnostic test. The reality is our children needs a checkup every now and then. Our children have a way of getting out of control. When they get a certain age, beloved, they want to just lose it. They think that they are fully grown. And every now and then you have to remind them that the roof that you live under is mine. The car that you drive is mine. The toilet paper that you use is mine. The clothes that you're wearing are mine. The food that you're eating is mine. The reality is, my brothers and sisters, we have to remind our children every now and then. Also, my brothers and sisters, we as children of the most high God. Not only do we need a reality check, but we need a faith checkup every now and then. How is your faith doing this pandemic? Do you still have faith? On the faith scale of zero through 10, what is your faith score? Your, your faith should decrease your doubt and fear. Your faith should increase the following. Your faith ought to increase your belief. Your faith ought to increase your swag. Your faith ought to increase the promises that God has made for us. But my brothers and my sisters, some of us are giving up on our faith because our situations did not change instantly. My brothers and sisters, just realize how many folk that have given up on their faith during this pandemic. Just imagine how many folk have given up on their faith before the pandemic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just imagine, just imagine how many folks are angry at God because he didn't come to their rescue when they called upon him. My brothers and sisters, every now and then God won't fix our problems instantly. He will allow some time to lapse. He will allow some trials to get unbearable before he show up. 
And the reason that he allowed those things to happen because he wants to increase our faith. Want to increase our faith. But my brothers and my sisters, I, I see something in this text as it talks about the faith that we ought to have. The first thing that I want us to see in this text, you can't rely on someone else's faith. Here in this text, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus heals a boy with a demon. There was a crowd, my brothers and sisters, and there was a man that was in the crowd. Because the crowd understood and knew every time that Jesus would show up somewhere in a bad situation, he will make it right. This man, he came in humble submission. He came and he began to kneel before the Lord. He began to plead his case. And the case that he's pleading, he's pleading this case for his son. He says, son is dealing with some bad seizures. He had some bad seizures that allows him to shake all the time. He's been suffering with this condition terribly. And you know how it is for any parent to see the child suffering and going through some storms and situations in their lives. The parent hurt along with the children. I know many of you can identify with me, even if your child just get a cough, you are concerned. This man, this man, my brothers and sisters, he's concerned about his son's illness. So now he's petitioning the one that can do the impossible. But what I like about this text, Jesus, is always being a role model. Jesus is training some disciples because Jesus is training them because Jesus is letting them know that you won't have me always. And Jesus is also letting them know that I'm not going to bear all of your troubles. And Jesus is basically telling them in verse 17, you, you, you have to grow up because we have a faithless and twisted generation. And how long am I going to be with you? Stop by to encourage all of us today. We're dealing with a faithless and twisted generation. They have lost their zeal. They have lost their desire to believe and the Lord God Almighty. We are dealing with a twisted and faithless generation. They are shouting the name of the Lord, but they are denying the power thereof. But Jesus is trying to teach these disciples. Jesus is saying, if you going to be with me, you need to see what I'm doing. You need to learn what I'm doing so you can practice what I'm doing. Jesus got kind of agitated them. Jesus said, look here, this man, this young boy has a illness. He has a demon. And you did not, and you were not strong enough to, 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 to cast this demon out of this young boy. What were you doing when I was healing? What were you doing when I was laying hands on the sick? Did you believe that I can do the impossible? And my brothers and my sisters, so many of us 
are seeing what God is doing. And so many unbelievers are seeing what God is doing. But they still refuse to believe that God can do everything but fail. That, sound, that sounds to me like a twisted generation. Somebody's mind is twisted. I need to be fixed up. Because the reality is the same God that has brought many of us through this is the same God will certainly bring us through that. So Jesus said, how long am I going to bear with you? Bring him to me. Bring him to me. And watch what Jesus does. Jesus said, since you can do it, I'm going to show you how it is done. And the problem is, my brothers and sisters, you can't rely on someone else's faith. Because in this text, these disciples, they was relying on the faith that Jesus provided them. But they was walking with Jesus, they were talking with Jesus, they were praying with Jesus, but they didn't have any faith. I stopped by to tell somebody, you need to get your own faith. Because you can't depend on mama's faith. You can't depend on grandmama's faith. You can't depend on granddaddy's faith. You can't begin on your daddy's faith. You gotta find your own faith. I stop by to tell somebody the fact that you ain't blessed because you're not relying on your own faith. The fact that no matter when you see someone else blessed, you begin to hate on them. You begin to look down on them because you are faithless and you are twisted in your mind. I stop by to tell somebody you need to activate the faith that is on the inside yes. of you. You can't rely on someone else's faith. Watch what happens. And this was Jesus telling these disciples. And watch what Jesus does. He, 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 he rebuked the man and the boy. And the boy was healed instantly. What I like about this text, text doesn't say how long this boy was dealing with this condition. But I can believe that this boy has been dealing with this condition for a long time. I can imagine that the father been going through this stress for a long time. But when a long time is your long time, it might not be God's long time. Because when God show up on time, because he is an on time God. Yes, he is. I stopped by to tell somebody today, I don't know what you're going through in your life, but God is about to show up on time. I know you've been struggling for a long time, depressed for a long time, confused for a long time, but your God is about to show up on time. And when God show up on time, the least you can do is give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Is there anybody besides me ever gone through some stuff in your life and God showed up and when he showed up, he showed out. Yeah. So, second thing that I want you to see in the text, a weak faith can weaken your witness. Watch this in the text. Here it is. These disciples, they're hanging out with Jesus. Jesus showed them up. But I had to give it to the disciples. They at least accepted the fact and their reality that they couldn't perform and, and rebuke the demon out of the boy. But watch this. What I like about the disciples now, they're little shame. Right? 
They embarrass. Why you say that? Look at verse 19. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? Now there was a public crowd. The disciples were out there in the crowd publicly and could not perform publicly. Jesus steps up and bear their responsibility publicly. And when the crowd, watch this, can I just use my imagination? Saw that the disciples could not perform. It weakened their witnesses. What are you talking about? You've been walking with Jesus. You've been trained by Jesus. And you mean to tell me your faith is just like my faith? I stopped by to tell somebody, many of our faith is so weak that it has weakened our witness. Go aloud. Your weak faith uh -huh. to weaken your witness. Watch what happens to Jesus privately. Why couldn't we cast it out? Wait a minute. Walking with me, you've been talking with me, you've been praying with me, you have the audacity to ask me a question. Why? Couldn't I cash it out? And I can imagine, I just use my own imagination. I can imagine Jesus said, Do you really want to know why you couldn't cast the demon out? Are you serious? Now, I couldn't embarrass you in public when you couldn't perform. But now you come to me privately to ask me a question, asking me what was wrong that I couldn't cast it out. But Jesus said, look here, I'm going to give you a pass this time. Uh -huh. He said to them, because of your little faith. Mm, because of your little and the word little means little. Your little faith. He said, For I truly say to you, if you have faith like a grain, can you just imagine one grain of a grass seed, just one? If you just have just a little faith, a small faith that you can do the exceedingly and the, and the abundantly, but you don't have no faith. Yes, sir. And the problem is, many of us come to church Sunday after Sunday, they're coming to church all of our lives, and we don't have no faith. Yes, sir. I stop by to raise a question Where is your faith? Do you still believe that God can do the impossible? Do you believe that God can heal the land? I want to raise a question. And it's not a big question. It's a small question. Where is your little faith? Just imagine if we all just had a little faith. And the reality is, I know that some of us don't have no faith because we can pray all day long. And the reality is, when you have faith in God, you ought not to be speaking death over your life. You ought to be able to speak life over your life. You ought to be able to speak life 
over your children. When you walk in your neighborhood, you ought to be speaking life because God can do the impossible if we speak life. And I'm talking to somebody today, it's time for you to lift up your head and start walking and start talking and start believing that God will make a way out of no way. Am I talking to some depressed folk out there? I know that you're depressed and your medication is not helping you. But I tell you to throw your head back and look towards the hills from which coming your help because all of your help coming from the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. Don't throw in the towel too soon because your help is on the way. Lastly, 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 it's all you need. It's a little faith. Just imagine having just a little faith. Just having a little faith. Size. Mustard seed. Just one mustard seed. Just imagine what you can do. Can you just imagine? What you can do. Because the Bible says. I say to you. If you have faith. Like a grain. Of a mustard seed. You will. Say. To this mountain. Move. From here. To there. What I like about this text here, this, this mountain is considered, considered to be the problems that you are experiencing in, in your life. The mountain can be the fears that you have. The mountains can be the anxieties that you have. The mountain can be your financial situation. The mountain can be your homeless situation. The mountain can be your family situation. I stop by to tell somebody it's time for you to increase your faith. It's time for you to walk into your faith. It's time for you to tell depression, get out of my way. It's time for you to tell whatever is blocking you to giving God the glory, from giving God the glory and the praise. A little faith will tell your mountain, I want you to move somewhere. And I'm going to watch this. I'm going to tell the mountain to move from in front of me. I'm going to tell the mountain to watch this move to the left side. Because i got enough faith to believe that I can talk to the mountain. I wish I had some folk out there who don't mind talking to their mountains this morning. Tell your mountain, I know you're in front of me, but you won't be in front of me too long. It's time for you to move behind me so I can see God. That is in front of me. I stop by to encourage you. You have a future in front of you. In spite of the pandemic, you still got a future. Tell the pandemic, I know you got me fearful. I know you got me in the house. But you got to move out of my way. And you got to move. Not just out of my way, you're gonna move out of my community, you're gonna move from my family, you're gonna move out of the White House, you got to move.
died from the COVID-19. God is able. Because he's already gone and prepared a place for those who are dead in Christ. So we got the victory all the way around. But the question I want to raise, are you sharing the gospel during the season of pandemic? Are you encouraging those who are faithless and twisted that things will get better? Are you bringing hope to those who have already thrown in the towel? Certainly, my brothers and sisters, as we are closing, and the reality is we know that the word can give us strength. Know that the word can bring us comfort. But brothers and sisters, every now and then, our minds, our mind needs a mental health checkup. I invite you to Reach out on our website, carmonyshope.org, where we have capable and qualified clinicians have always been willing to serve you for over the past three years. We encourage you to call. What we do here is confidential. We have a full support team that are certainly meeting the needs of so many. But also on that site, you can, you can see additional information. We are having workshops every Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, I'm sorry, from 12 to 1 on Zoom. You can look on that website, Carmody's with the S, hope.org. You can get that information there. So it's our desire to be an inclusive ministry we can deal with the mind, the body, and the soul. Certainly, again, we are preparing for our mental health workshop. Certainly, we thank God for the work that has gone on for that. Our mental health conference, I'm sorry, not workshop, but our mental health conference, we have uh, great clinicians that are pre presenting to us. You will be hearing more about that um, in the future. So we just want to invite you uh, to come and get a mental checkup every now and then. We all need it. So continue to pray for us. We've certainly been in existence for three long years. Again, God has been doing a great work. Certainly, I thank God for giving me this vision over three years ago uh, to find, to be the founder of our Hope Center, Holistic Opportunities Propelling Everyone. That is our desire, that everyone can grow, thrive, and strive. So again, this is nothing new to us, so certainly we encourage you Again, to, to also follow us on Facebook. We do have a Facebook page, uh, 
Conley Hills uh, Hope Center. A lot of our information is there as well. So again, we encourage you. There's no need for us to walk around stressed out. Uh, there's no need for us to walk around washed out. But there is hope for you. There's hope in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but also there's hope in our uh, mental health department. Certainly we thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for the viewers. We pray that the word of God has already blessed you. Let us pray. Father, my God, we thank you. We worship you. We magnify your name. God, we thank you for this time of sharing. We thank you for this time of celebration. God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen through scripture. God, I thank you for what our ears have heard. God, thank you for providing us with a faith checkup. And every now and then our faith needs to be pushed every now and then so that we won't be comfortable Let us not rely on someone else's faith. Let us not allow our faith to weaken our witness. Allow our faith that we have with on the inside of us to impact the lives of others. Thank you, God, that we all have faith if we just believe small. And God, I thank you again for your favor and how your math doesn't equate to our math. Thank you, God, because we're always looking for something big. God just said, just look at something small and I can make it big. So thank you for being a big God with our little faith. God, we worship you. We love you. We magnify your name. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 On behalf of Pastor Oscar L. Brody Jr. and the entire Carmody Hills Baptist Church family, we wish to extend our warmest congratulations to the members of the class of 2020. In the middle school division, we have Micaiah Harris Everett, Joseph Hardy IV. Joshua Jefferson. In the high school division, we have Oscar Brody III. Jaye Melton. In our college division, we have Jomia Hardy.
now that we have made it to brand new doors don't know what's in store god what are your plans for me god wants me to the world my new day has begun So uh, at this time, we know that you're going for the realm. We know that you can use our cash app and, and so forth. We know that you can mail uh, your tithes and your gifts uh, to this ministry. So certainly we thank you and we thank God for you.